Uh, what are some of the challenges here? Are there side effects to these drugs? What are we talking about? So we're in an age where we have medications that you need to take every day and you can basically manage HIV. It's become a chronic disease state. And just like every chronic disease state, you have to take your medication every day. And that's the biggest challenge. Can I stop for just a second? Another definitional issue. Is it a disease? If you have HIV, but it's not manifesting itself with any symptoms because you're taking medicine, is that a disease? Boy, that's a, that's a good question. You know, I, I think that's, that's an evolving, that, that has evolved over the years. And I look at HIV now in a slightly different way. Um, if you have high blood pressure, but you take a medicine, and every time we measure your blood pressure, it's 120 over 80, do you have high blood pressure? Ah. Um, you have a condition, a chronic condition, that you're managing, but every time when we measure your blood pressure, if it's 120 over 80, do you have the disease of high blood pressure? Or do you have a, a manageable condition? And if somebody has HIV currently, and they take their medicine every day, and every time we measure how much HIV is in their body, we cannot measure anything. That's interesting. Do they it? have a disease? Yeah. Or but the key there, though, if you, if you stop the medication, then you have... So symptoms. So therefore, you you don't ever you, get away, you don't ever get yeah. away from the disease. You no. can't eliminate it completely right. because you're measuring the amount of HIV in your blood. Do we know how much is in your cells? How much are in your organs? But if it's not affecting your cells or your organs, is it causing well, disease? Well, what about the chronic inflammation that comes with it? When you knock it all down, it's interesting, huh? What about about um, long-term medication adherence issues? These are issues that now pop up. What do we do about that? That's probably the biggest challenge that, that I think we're facing. Why is it a challenge at all? But that's the key. It's like any, any chronic disease, persistency and mm -hmm. compliance is always probably the number one issue. It's just because if, if the better, it's almost like a catch-22. The better you're controlled, the better you're managed, the, sometimes you can become it's human nature. desensitized to it, right? And you just come to your, So there's know. medication but, fatigue. That, that's but, but even with symptomatic diseases and, 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 thing, and things patients feel, Patients still are not compliant, and there's a lot of reasons that contribute to that. Mm -hmm. But that is that that is always going to be a huge issue. Human beings are a mystery. Yeah, you've got a lethal, potentially lethal problem. Here's a pill. Yeah, it's well tolerated. Take it, and the lethality goes away. Why won't you take this? And we'll talk about this later. But there there are a lot of things that we can do to address that. Okay. And I think we all have a role, role in that. But what? yeah, compliance and persistency will always. And now, technically, yeah. we take some drugs. And there is resistance to some of these drugs, right? So that is an issue. How, how, how bad a problem so is that? So if you're adherent, you shouldn't have to develop resistance. Resistance comes from non-adherence. The HIV virus is smart, and it can mutate. And um, if you're adherent to your medications, you should not develop resistance, and I think that's a, that's a major issue. And there certainly has been progress that's been made through the years, and, and I, I'm thankful to the pharmaceutical uh, world and then their development of newer drugs. Some of the medicines we had to give people in the 90s mm -hmm. uh, and, and even before were many pills dosed multiple times a day with many side effects. So Need it was much- see A-Z-T. Right. Awful drug. <laughs> that was one. And, and the, uh, uh, you know, the first uh, regimens were referred to as cocktails. Yep. And you know, I'm from a, uh, uh, my father was a Baptist minister. Nobody, <laughs> nobody drank, and, uh, but I was uh, at, a, at a meeting in, a, in Chicago a, a, a few years ago, and I was a, down in the lobby, and they had a cocktail menu. And I looked at it, and each drink had a paragraph of multiple ingredients. And all of a sudden, I realized, aha, a cocktail. That, that explains the 18 pills back in the 90s, and 12, and 15. Right. Shake it. Not with stirred, with multiple, way. you know, ingredients, yeah. uh, and that, and we really refer to it as a cocktail. We don't refer to one pill a day regimen today as a cocktail. Ben, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say I, I I totally agree with my colleagues that we've made a lot of progress in this area with better drugs that are safer, better tolerated, fewer drug interactions. Uh, but education is always going to be an issue. Uh, persistency is always going to be an issue. But I just wanted to uh, add a little bit of a payer perspective, is that HIV is one of the top five or six categories in terms of cost for specialty, under specialty for most payers. And it's really one of, along with maybe hemophilia, is really the only category that's not managed right now. So this is going to get a lot of attention. It's really been hands off. 
Uh, we've seen a lot of price increases over the last few years. Um, there's, there's, I don't know if there's any contracting. If there's contracting, there's very little contracting. So there's, there, there are really no price concessions. So it's going to lead to some other discussions here shortly if we don't uh, right. do a better job of collaborating. And I think to me, that's one of the biggest challenges is, this is hands off, it's been hands off. Payers are told not, you can't touch this. But if you look at this and like any other specialty disease, more and more the total cost of the category is dr driven by the drugs. So if we don't have better conversations between all the different stakeholders, this, we might end up in a place that none of us want to be. All right, look, all that I know is, if you take a look at the AIDS, pop AIDS, HIV population going forward, to me, when I read the literature, what I read about is how do you handle an aging population? And occasionally the drug-drug interactions, because some of these, yeah. these antiretrovirals do have interactions with drugs, antihypertensives, cardiac drugs, whatever, diabetic drugs, that's, that's fascinating, and boy, is that a great place to have landed, yes? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, we now know that over half of all of our patients are over the age of 50. And, uh, and, and, and it, we, as people are not dying with HIV, they're living with HIV, and they're living longer. And as people age, they often will require hypertension, hyperlipidemia, perhaps some diabetes medicine uh, as, as we age. And so there are drug-drug interactions uh -huh. definitely to be. Okay. That's one of the things I want to come back to later. I do want is, to get back to it. Is well, how, we, 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 how we holistically, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and I think a payer has a huge uh, role in doing that. I do too. I'll tell you one thing that struck me. There were articles about how do we handle obesity in the HIV positive population yeah. when we all know that in the early days of this epidemic, yeah, they died true as skeletons. Yeah. It was a skeletonizing, inanition-inducing disease. And now, like anybody else, how do we go to the gym? I'm telling you, this has been remarkable from a physician's, a clinician's perspective.